let's uh ready the motor city madman Twenty-seven? No, no, no. Ten, twenty-nine, twenty-twenty. Detroit, Michigan, FEMA Region Five. BJ Hammerstein. This is show number eight. Welcome. Thanks for being here. Let's take a look at Lansing, Michigan, the Donald Trump rally from the other day. This camera that I'm talking to right now wasn't allowed in. My cell phones died, so I have very little footage. But here we go. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That is going to win by a yes. landslide. Yes, yes. Popular vote, yeah. electoral vote. Unless the electoral colleges decide they don't want to take the popular vote into consideration, he's going to win. Unless there's funny business. It's guaranteed. Funny business. What's your home state? Uh, I'm from Virginia. From Virginia? And Virginia is going Trump? <laughs> yes, yes, Virginia's going Thanks Trump. Thanks so much. You will do your business. <laughs> then we got this guy here. <laughs> I don't even know. Most fun I've had uh, since lockdown started, though. Super spreader events. Good times. Good times for all. Let's take a quick listen to uh, Trump from Michigan on October 7, 2020. He's coming back Friday morning, Oakland County International Airport. Doors at 10. Uh, POTUS on at 1, I believe. But overall, it's good to have the testing. We find out where it is, and there are a lot of things. But... They use it to make us look bad. But here's the story. It's COVID, COVID, COVID. You can't watch anything else. On November 4th, you won't be hearing so much about it. Okay? November 4th. On November 4th, you'll hear. It's getting better. It's getting better. You watch. No, no, they're doing heavy COVID because they want to scare people. And uh, people, people get it. I'll tell you, they understand these people better than... You are smarter than most of the political people in this world. You get it. Get it. <laughs> Very smart. No, November 4th, you'll see there's a big difference. And I'll tell you what, you know what else is going to happen on November 4th? What? Your governor. Your what governor is? at the urging of her husband who has abused our system very badly. Oh, the only man allowed that. in the state of Michigan, the only man allowed to go sailing is her husband. <laughs> now, your governor, I don't think she likes me too much. Probably not, no. Hey, 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 I'm the one, it was our people that helped her out with her problem. I mean, we'll have to see if it's a problem, right? People are entitled to say maybe it was a problem, maybe it was. It was our people, my people, <laughs> our people that helped her out. And then she blamed me for it. She blamed me. It was our people that helped her. <laughs> I don't get, I don't get it. How did you put her there? <laughs> How did you put, how's John James doing, good? Oh. And uh, here is her response. We're just gonna read it. We're not gonna listen to the podcast. We're taking this from CBS New Whitmer on Trump's response to kidnapping plot. I don't think it's funny. Michigan Governor Gretchen Whitmer slammed President Trump for downplaying the alleged kidnapping plot against her, accusing him of stoking a mob mentality toward public officials. I don't think it's funny, she said of Mr. Trump's rhetoric during an interview with CBS News on Wednesday, and anyone who thinks it's funny, uh oh, that might be me, has a real twisted sense of what humor is. Whitmer spoke with CBS News Chief Washington correspondent Major Garrett for this week's episode of the Takeout Podcast, which will air in full on Friday. During a rally in Lansing, Michigan, on Tuesday, super cold, super rainy. It was sort of rainy and snowy, but it was a blast. Mr. Trump blasted Whitmer for imposing stay at home orders earlier in the year due to the coronavirus pandemic. When the president first mentioned the Michigan governor's name, the crowd began chanting, lock her up. Mr. Trump responded, I don't comment on that because every time if I make just a, even a little bit of a nod, they say the president led them on. It's true, that's what they would say. Now I don't have to lead you on. 
he didn't. The uh, crowd just did that on their own. They are not happy with uh, the lockdowns, the response, the full politis, uh, the politicking going on from the governor. There is a lot of unhappy with the governor people on uh, <laughs> on Tuesday. It was kind of fun, funny to be around so many people that felt the same way. <laughs> Probably need to cut that out. Wimmer drew a direct link between Mr. Trump's words and the threats she received. Every time he sets his sights on me, I get more death threats. The violent rhetoric has an uptick, and there's no question that it's had an impact, Whitmer told Garrett. I've had to have conversations with my teenage children about why there's people with AR-15s on our front lawn on more than one occasion. People are looking for any hook to legitimize these domestic terrorism tendencies. And I think that Donald Trump knows that. And it's not a coincidence, and he's feeding it. She also noted that Michigan had not been under stay-at-home stay at home orders since June, so the president is propagating things that are demonst demonstrably false, Whitmer said, for the purpose of feeding into the anxiety and fear and anger that people have. That's not exactly true, uh, Mrs. Whitmer. I think that the mom mentality has, that has been stoked, the fear that has been exploited, the anger that has been incited is real, and it has real impacts, Whitmer said. She argued that Mr. Trump's response to the plot against her tells you everything you need to know about the character of this president. To underplay what is the most serious plan to hurt a governor in our nation, I think shows an incredibly callous approach to looking at everything through a lens of what does it mean for himself as opposed to what it means for the good of our country, the health of our people, and the welfare of our democracy, Whitmer said. The Michigan governor, who is the co-chair for Joe Biden's presidential campaign, I didn't know that official title until just the other day. Let me repeat that. The Michigan governor, who is the co-chair for Joe Biden's presidential campaign. I'm not certain if a governor, a seated, sitting, sitting governor, should be chairing a presidential campaign. I understand the political world, and I worked inside of it, and I know all the rules get thrown away during the election season, and this election season clearly... Because early, uh, the same day, this Wednesday, I'm recording Wednesday night right now, and I'll um, at the end of this, show, or really as soon as I get out of this Trump rally, which is almost done right now, we're just going to go over some headlines. And included in the headlines is Governor Whitmer, Dana Nessel, uh, Lieutenant Governor Gilchrist, and uh, Secretary of State Jocelyn Benson talking about election safety and their concerns. I mean... Michigan Governor Whitmer is concerned about everything right now, and she should be. As the co-chair for Joe Biden's presidential campaign, you've lost this one. Okay, is there any more of this article to read? Yeah, sure. Whitmer says she believes Biden will win Michigan, but cautioned that we're not taking anything for granted. He's not going to win Michigan. She noted that people were voting early in person and by absentee in her state, with 2.2 million ballots already received. The historic turnout I think we're going to see is really good news for Joe Biden, Whitmer said. Again, I don't know if our governor should be on the Joe Biden presidential uh, campaign committee because now she's only talking about uh, politics when there's all sorts of problems with the state of Michigan right now. All sorts of problems. She also argued that the enthusiasm for Biden matches enthusiasm for the president. Unlike Mr. Trump's large, crowded events where there was limited social distancing and few people wearing facial coverings, she said the Biden campaign is holding events like drive-in rallies that keep attendees safe. I see a lot of enthusiasm for Joe Biden and Kamala Harris, Whitmer said. I do think that the enthusiasm will be will be revealed in the sheer number of people that are coming out to vote. I mean, I'm concerned that the governor of the great state of Michigan sees a lot of enthusiasm for the Joe Biden campaign. No, there's a lot of enthusiasm because of the hatred that is shared for Trump and uh, the Trump followers, the Trump supporters, the deplorables, as you guys like to call them. But there's very little enthusiasm for Joe Biden. Let's be clear. All right, we're just kind of going to bust through this because I want to do another show tomorrow night and probably another show the next night. It is election season. If you knew me from my past life, BJ Hammerstein, reporter, arts and entertainment, I did a lot of concerts, lots of concerts, lots of events. I would go to lots of festivals and I would always get into the spirit. So putting on a hat, 
I know it's going to trigger a lot of people. I know the cover. I know everything about me triggers people these days, but there is um, a lot of really good American policies that come out of President Donald J. Trump. And uh, it's very different than the Unity Task Force policies by Joe Biden. And I'm going to do a special um, episode on the Unity Task Force before the election. So stay tuned for that. This is the camera right here. I got a used refurbished Nikon and um, I got to work on the camera settings. You saw it when I did sort of my dateline. Hi, who I am. BJ Hammerson, that little part. Um, I've got it because I wanted to go to the Trump rally with it. And I'm very happy I have it. I will be utilizing it, but I have to work it out first. I don't think the quality was so good on the earlier shot. I have the theme shows coming up, the election shows I told you about. Oh, <laughs> isn't this funny? Please subscribe. Comment. Please comment. I'd like to hear from you. Like and share. And we're just going to go bust through some headlines right now and then um, end the show. Hang on. One moment, please. Thanks. All right. It's all sort of related at this point. It always has been related. Everything kind of connects together, especially if you understand quantum theory. All that fun quantum <laughs> physics, all the good stuff there. But uh, let me look at these headlines real fast. Facebook, Twitter CEO struggle to name a single liberal who has been censored on their platforms. Senator Cruz to Twitter CEO, who the hell elected you? Cruz in heated exchange with Twitter's Dorsey, who the hell elected you? That's the, obviously the phrase. Uh, who the hell elected you? Live updates, Facebook, Google, and Twitter executives testify in social media regulations. This stems from, I mean, it's been going on for a very long time, anti-conservative censorship. And it's it's very, very strange to come from my spot as a you know, lifelong Democrat uh, in the media, First Amendment free speech fighter, and uh, to really understand this conservative uh, censorship, it's beyond crazy. But the big reason might be right here. Let's listen to uh, Jesse. Let me just give Peter some advice. Ask the vice president. This is about hey, Hunter. Mr. Vice President, you ever met Tony? Joe Biden. Let's see if he can answer that question, because that would settle a lot of things. You bring up credibility. I, let's bring it up. Who do you believe? Do you this believe the CJ naval Truth. officer that held a high On security Twitter. clearance, that commanded a nuclear submarine, that has emails and documentation and voice recordings, that went to the FBI under penalty of perjury and said his story? Or... Do you believe the political family with a history of plagiarism and shady deal making who's hidden and ran for the hills since this broke and three of their business partners are in prison? The deal is very simple. They cooked it up in 2015 while Joe was VP. The Chinese communists sent $10 million to the Biden family. Five million of it was an interest free loan. The other five million went to the holding company where Jim Biden, the bro, held back 10 for the big guy. So then Tony meets with the VP twice on this. And then when Tony wants to put in good corporate governance, Joe Biden says no, they cut Tony out of the deal, and then they smear him as an, a Russian agent when he goes to the FBI. But the best part of the story is this. The communist Chinese guy who they were dealing the deal with, he was under FBI surveillance because he was a spy. And then when he get popped by the SDNY for bribery, Hunter Biden represents him for a million dollar fee. And now he's serving three years in jail. So the Biden family was doing business with Chinese communist spies who were under FBI surveillance. Boom. Boom indeed. From my Twitter following Fox 2, Detroit local Fox 2, I'm sorry to do this to you, Fox 2, right now. The CEOs of Twitter, Facebook, and Google are facing a grilling by Republican senators making unfounded allegations. It's not, it's not true, man. It's definitely founded. It's a founded machine. They founded maybe Lady Gaga on the Hunter Biden machine, if you could believe that. Hope that's not you, Lady Gaga. Wowza. 
That's from at S T K O S M O S I S on Twitter. What else have we got over here? Do, 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 do. Farmington Hills man charged with unemployment fraud, showboated lavish lifestyle on social media. This is a horrible story. Uh, Farm a Farmington Hills man is facing several charges accused of stealing from the unemployment insurance agency, then showboating his lavish lifestyle on social media with stacks of cash, luxury cars, and appearing to brag to law enforcement. This is a brazen crime spree that started back in April. U.S. Attorney Matthew Schneider says, if you think you could steal from the government and not get caught, you better think again. This unemployment fraud could be the largest fraud against the taxpayers in a generation. I Andre Taylor, 27, of Farmington Hills, is charged with three counts of wire fraud, three counts of aggravated identity theft, and four counts of mail fraud after he allegedly defrauded the Michigan Unemployment Insurance Agency, credit card companies, and stole identities of area residents. It's stunning the amount of money that is being taken away from the people who are unemployed, Schneider said. Taylor is accused of filing unemployment claims in Michigan and other states. It's alleged he had the state unemployment agencies send him $600 in prepaid cards. He had the state unemployment agencies send him $600 in prepaid credit cards and additional weekly benefit during the pandemic for people out of work and spent those gift cards at Meyer, Kroger, and other stores. He would even allegedly mail some of the cards to, house, to his house and relatives. When you're unemployed and you need that money for yourself that goes to feed your family, there's only so much money available. And when you, when people like this steal that money away, it really hurts. U.S. Attorney Matthew Schneider says Taylor would then post pictures of mounds of cash, luxury cars, and more on social media. Schneider says it wasn't the feds who brought them this case. It was the USPS, the Postal Service, who say Taylor would bribe mail carriers to steal debit and credit cards along their routes. This is horrible. Yeah, so that happened. What else? What else are we here? Oh, yes. Keith Renere. Nexium gets 120 years in prison in sex slaves case. Keith was in my last video right at the end talking about science. <laughs> this cult leader was talking about science. Let me read a little bit from uh, the Associated Press. Disgrace, self-improvement guru, Keith Renere, whose Nexium followers included millionaires and Hollywood actors, was sentenced to 120 years on Tuesday for turning some adherents into sex slaves branded with his initials and sexually abusing a 15-year-old. U.S. District Judge Nicholas Garufus called Renere ruthless and unyielding in crimes that were per particularly egregious because he targeted girls and young women in the sex traffic trafficking conspiracy that resulted in Ranieri's conviction last year. He handed down the unusually stiff sentence in Brooklyn. Good, good that this, this happened. In Brooklyn Federal Court, after hearing 15 victims call for a long prison term to reflect the nightmares and anguish they'll confront the rest of their lives. As he announced the sentence, Garufus <laughs> noted that Ranieri labeled some of the victims' claims lies. Of course he did. If you watch The Vow, this guy was gross. The judge told a woman who Ranieri ordered to be kept in a room for two years when she was 18. What happened to you is not your fault. He said that one for other victims, too. Uh, over here, I think we're going to end our show right now uh, with Vincent Kennedy at Vincent Crip 46 This is what we're dealing with, people. Trump 2020 landslide. This is actually it's a retweet from at Still Gray, Ian Miles Chong. This is not Photoshop. Oregon's statewide total for COVID-19 public deaths health authority announced COVID deaths in clown makeup. This is for real people. I'll see you tomorrow night really late like As this. of today, there have been 38,160 cases of COVID-19 in Oregon, to it. with 390 new cases being reported today. Sadly, we are this also reporting three deaths. <laughs> this, where, where do we live? Total for the upside down, as I say. Oh, man. Excuse my language. <laughs> Bye.